thing now. And yeah, welcome to this second event of the Africa um, Social Innovation Circle. And it's very exciting to have you all with us. So thank you for following the invitation. And this is the second event. We had one in February where we had two SENA social entrepreneurs, three of them okay, actually George. share their stories and their um, yeah, social enterprises and what SENA has meant to them. And again, today we're going to have two wonderful, incredible social entrepreneurs from SENA who will share a little bit more. And we get to that um, in just about a minute. And so, no, yeah, I'll also share a little bit more again, just on what Sina is and what Sina does. Would be great if all of us can mute if, if we're not speaking. And yeah, and then in the end, we hope to have enough time to do a little bit more of engagements that you can ask questions and, and we can have a bit more of discussions. And we'd love to have you on board in our social innovation circle. From last time, we have about five members that are on board. And um, yeah, we'll talk about that also in a minute. So again, welcome. And I'm Etienne and the, you could say original founder of Sina, but since it's a self-organized model, I'm not like the boss, but rather holding different roles like anyone else within Sina. And um, yeah, what you see in the background is our first Sina community. And um, from there we have grown to quite a bigger, um, impact and we're having a lot more to do and a lot bigger vision that we try to achieve and that's why we're here to, to share and maybe get you on board to to support as well and why we're doing this is because um, it's clear that Africa's population is going to double in about the next 20 years uh, or 30 years um, and already today there's a lot of youth unemployment young people having no uh, opportunities to find an income, to find jobs. And that leads to a lot of conflicts and a lot of um, desperate situations. And already today, there's about over 32 million people displaced on the African continent. And in just Uganda alone, there's over 1.5 million refugees. And for them, it is even harder to find a future um, in countries where already the situation for young people is quite challenging. So as Sina, who have been able to create a unique and self-organized model that allows young people from disadvantaged and marginalized backgrounds to create their own future and are on the way to allow a whole generation to shape the future of the African continent through social entrepreneurship, through finding ways of solving challenges through a sustainable approach of social um, entrepreneurship. And yeah, so much maybe as a small um, opener and I would really love to make this a bit more personal and that's why maybe what we normally do in Sina as well is called a check-in um, just like at the airport you check in or in an event maybe you check in we can check in here how are you entering this meeting but also would be really nice to hear from you more what is your connection to to Sina um, if there is already any and if not then um, why are you here why have you chosen to, to attend this event? And also, of course, who are you? So that we can all get to know each other. Last time, it was a wonderful moment that already was a lot of connection and networking that started to happen. So I've started, I'll pass over to Tony and then the next person will always nominate someone else who will follow. So I give over to you, Tony, and we start with the check-in and introductions. Yeah, thank you so much. <clears throat> uh, my name is, I am Tony. I am uh, part of Sina as well. I come from the community which you see on Etienne's background, which is the Sina PG community. Um, I hold a number of roles in here and uh, I am pretty excited to be part of this call, to meet all of you. And uh, I can't wait to see how it unfolds. Um, the Sina community where I come from is the one that prototyped, developed, and tested the SINA model, which is now scaling into the different parts of the world. So I'm grateful to know you, and uh, I will uh, hand over to Chris. Hi, sorry, I just got disconnected. Uh, I'm back on. 
Uh, I'm Chris Graff. Uh, I'm uh, an impact investor uh, here in the States, split my time between uh, New York and Montana, where we head tomorrow. Uh, and I got to know Cena through Tony, uh, who I met through uh, the Because International Incubator and uh, became a partner in, in uh, their startup, uh, Our Roots, and, and then uh, met Etienne uh, through Tony and just uh, love everything that uh, Tony and I are doing and, and Cena is doing and uh, ha happy to be here. Thanks. Uh, I'll pass it on to another partner, uh, Nick. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Uh, my name is Nick Howell. I'm based in the UK. Uh, I'm also an impact investor. Um, I'm also one of the one of the five members uh, that Etienne mentioned before. Um, I'm also part of the Because International program. Um, I'm a mentor on that program. Um, and uh, Chris introduced me to Etienne and, and Sina, and that's the uh, connection. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'll pass on to Charles. Thanks, Nick. Um, good morning, at least where I am. Um, I'm in Vancouver, British Columbia. It's a beautiful sunny day. Um, great to be here. Um, my connection to Cena occurred, gosh, I guess about, I don't know how many years ago, five, six, seven, eight years ago, um, TripAdvisor uh, suggested that my daughter and I should visit um, the academy when we were in Uganda. I, I support about four different um, initiatives, including the Uganda Rural Training Development uh, Program, which is now a university in, uh, in Western uh, Uganda with uh, Malamu Mosheshe, uh, and then a health clinic uh, up north and a few others. But when we, uh, we went to, we thought we were going to stay at a hostel. Uh, we weren't really sure what it was. Um, and we're absolutely blown away uh, by seeing a village uh, there in Uganda and met, uh, met a chin and a lot of the folks uh, at there at the time and just really just fell in love with, um, with the intention, the work, uh, the energy, the passion, the compassion of, of the, the people that we met. And so uh, have stayed in touch with Etienne and uh, just here to do what I can to help. I'm a convener, I'm a facilitator. I, I convene gatherings of large corporate groups, multi-sectoral groups, government groups uh, in countries all around the world. And uh, feel like I'm one of the luckiest people in the world to get to do what I do. And I will pass it to Susanna. Hi, everybody. I slightly distracted my little granddaughter hit her head this morning. So it's been like, ah, so anyway, she's settled now. We're taking care of her today. Um, I met Etienne at a nonviolent communication retreat, and I was so inspired by Sina, a colleague in my and my partner, we went there for a week and spent time with Etienne and the community and just really fell in love both with the community, but also the power of what the creation, and the, particularly around the self-organizing and really intrigued. And I, I live in the United States and have been uh, practicing and studying co-housing and intentional living. So I'm just learning over and over like how I might create something like that because I love working with uh, young people because uh, it, it just feels like I want to leave a legacy of young people who can follow their dreams and their passion that could serve the world. And I just see that happening time and time again through Sina. And I'm just really grateful and inspired by the whole community's vision. i have I, like Etienne, I'm not going to say Etienne's vision, the whole community's vision and what, what that's growing into. So I will pass it to Janet, who I met as well with Etienne years ago, who I love very much. Um, hello, I'm Janet Aguti. I think I'll be presenting myself more later on, so I'll leave the floor to somebody else who has not yet spoken among the guests. Um, Joyce? Uh, 
Hi, I'm, I am Joyce Malombe. I work with Wellspring Philanthropic Fund um, on education. I met Etienne through Isa, uh, Lisa Isroff, and uh, then I got to talk and to get to know the program. I am very, very interested in young people. They drive me, they make me see possibilities, they make me see the future. And so I'm, I'm, I, I just engage because it matters to me. And so I will, the next person I'll propose is the one who sent me here, Lisa. Thank you, Joyce. Uh... I appreciate that. It's a real honor and privilege to be here. Uh, Etienne, you spoke up front about things that we share in common. Um, seems like I have touch points with most of you already. So I too live in the States, uh, based in New York, where there's also a beautiful day today. Um, so feeling very lucky for that. Uh, also feeling very lucky, as someone else referenced earlier, uh, to be able to do the work that I do. Uh, I am a philanthropist. We invest in early stage uh, leaders of proximate organizations in East Africa. Uh, and that's how originally I came to Etienne. He uh, joined our collaborative learning initiative program last year. That was the first time we engaged. Uh, I have continued to be incredibly inspired by Etienne. And I think even more inspired by the potential and the power of his ideas. Uh, so he had to learn more and feeling very lucky and privileged to be in this group. Thank you. Then I will go with Ola next. Well, hi, thank you, Etienne. Um, my name is Ola. Uh, I work for the Global Solutions Initiative and um, we're based in Berlin, Germany. And part of my responsibilities is organizing and hosting a, an award, the Young Global Changers Recoupling Award, we call it. And we, we, when we did our last call for applications, we noticed that there were so many outstanding social entrepreneurs from Uganda and we wondered how can that be? What was happening in Uganda? And that's how we, we found Etienne and, and Sina. And um, Etienne and the Sina projects were, were part of our 10 finalists. Another uh, social entrepreneur from the Sina Academy was also part of that group of 10. And I got to meet Etienne here in Berlin. And um, what, what, what he does, what everyone does at Sina, is, is really inspiring. And Etienne and I talked uh, a while while he was in Berlin and had a lot of ideas uh, of possible uh, co uh, collaboration and mutual support. So I'm, I'm here to learn and I, I'm really thankful for this invitation. Oh, and I pass on to Margot. Hi, um, I'm Margot coming from Provence, I, am, I hail from the Netherlands, but when COVID hit, um, we thought it a brilliant plan to move to our building pit in Provence and then life just was so good here. And we were working online that we decided not to move back to the Netherlands. Um, I work as a facilitator convener, uh, spent the past 20 odd years getting um, innovative challenges and challenging and at times very tough collaborations moving forward. And that's in topics as improving digital literacy in Europe, enhancing access to education information across Europe, Asia and Africa, uh, promoting gender equality in the Netherlands, finding meaningful ways forward with the legacy of war and conflict in Europe, uh, as well as working on future leadership skills, roles, images, what is it that we need. Um, and I just came out of a masterclass that I gave with James Wanjira from the SENA network uh, on conflict, um, how to facilitate conflict, how to use that, that space that conflict offers to move forward. And Chen and I met, and this is going to sound horribly tacky, we met online. Um, I think you contacted me through LinkedIn to save my life. I don't know how we found each other. Uh, had a great conversation and you said, oh, we have somebody who wants to work as a facilitator. Would you like to mentor him? And my response to that was, 
well, as long as you take mentoring as knowledge sharing two ways, because mentoring sort of supposes that one knows it and the other one needs to learn, and that's hardly ever the case. And that was James, and we hit it off, and I'm, um, I'm very impressed with the Sina way of working, what I've learned so far, because it's only been a couple of months. And I see a lot of potential to also get that more into European ways of working. Um, and I just got a request because I was going to pass the floor to Emanuela, but at the minute she cannot introduce herself. So she just asked me, can you please introduce me? So I will do that. Emanuela is a very dear and longstanding friend of mine. I think that's about 25 years ago that we met when she was heading ABLIDA, an association of public libraries, lobbying for uh, open copyright in Europe. She's since moved on. She's a copyright and intellectual property right lawyer and advisor, works amongst others for Eiffelnet, an organization that allows a lot of libraries also in Africa and in Asia to form consortia and to negotiate more access to information education. But she's also here from her role as uh, the lead of Kids MBA, which is focused on teaching kids across, the, that's literally around the world, um, entrepreneurial skills. There's a lot of companies, her husband, who's an insolvency lawyer, found that a lot of companies go bankrupt basically through a lack of basic entrepreneurial skills. So through Kids MBA, which is hugely successful in South America, um, also in Africa and in Asia. Uh, through Kids MBA, they're trying to stimulate entrepreneurship. And I thought that's why I invited Emmanuel on board with this meeting. That's very aligned with the goals of SENA. Done talking. Lauren, the floor is yours. Thank you. I'm also here um, as an extended invite of, of Margo. So my name is Lauren Vargas, and I'm an independent researcher and consultant. I specialize in digital skills, digital civility, and digital community building. Really happy to be part of today's conversation, and I'll pass um, it on to Lucky. Yeah, thank you so much for this opportunity. Hello, everyone, once again. Yeah, hopefully you're going to hear more about me later, but I'm giving this opportunity to... We lost a little bit lucky. Maybe we go over to Scott. Yeah, hello. Um, yeah, so Scott Swift. Uh, I um, met Athena through one of his entrepreneurs um, who connected with me on LinkedIn. I, I've, uh, I'm a 20 year tech veteran. I've worked for 14 startups. I've also worked for IBM and Cisco uh, on contract. Um, we, uh, so I, I've been working in a business development role and building partnerships for VC uh, backed tech companies for for quite some time and um yeah i mean we um so i have a son he has both autism and epilepsy he's 20 uh we started autism support and turned and spun that into teen health and uh and and and, and made it a nonprofit. so we are uh passionate about supporting individuals with disabilities in the u.s and beyond um we're engaged in east africa we're engaged in tanzania um, interesting, interestingly enough, our model includes running events where we support nonprofits. Um, we're big into cycling. We're going to be cycling in October in, from New York City to DC on the East Coast Greenway, which is a protected bike and walk path across 18 states on the East Coast. Um, and um, so we'll be doing about 300 miles of that and raising money for Kemba Uta Foundation, step-by-step -step learning center, both of which support in, um, individuals, uh, kids, teens, young adults with, in, with disabilities. Um, we're also uh, engaged with Accessible Hope International. That is, a, is another US-based nonprofit and, um, and 
you know, working across Africa and Asia. So, you know, it's, pr it's pretty interesting our, how our model came together, but really excited about what Scene is doing and hopefully can, um, can you know, um, engage with, with some of the start, you know, with some of the startups at some point, but very interested in learning more. And uh, yeah, is there a Joyce I can hand it to? We had had already from Joyce. Maybe we we'll go to Yost. Similar. <laughs> oh, hi everybody. Uh, I'm Yost, uh, based in Berlin, Germany. I'm currently on a on a swing, which is super cool. Um, and uh, yeah, I I'm working for the Tree Care Foundation. It's a foundation um, that is connected to one of the largest travel groups in, on on the planet. We're investing in education conservation and economic development slash entrepreneurship across the globe, really, from um, South America to, to the African continent, Southeast Asia, Southern Europe. Um, and I got, I came across Etienne and Sina like two years ago, I think exactly like uh, during the first couple of weeks of, uh, of Corona and uh, got super excited about the, the model and PG. Um, and it really resonated very well with me. So I reached out and uh, we got to meet a couple of times and it didn't take long uh, until we started funding um, a program or two, actually two at the moment. Um, um, Sina is part of a, a group of mentors that does mentor social entrepreneurs uh, that are engaged in tourism. There's a competition that is happening at the moment where Sina is taking the mentoring lead, which is super cool because it kind of flips also the traditional mentoring a narrative a little bit where in my opinion it tends to be uh, white people mentoring brown and black people which i find uh, um, not not correct and kind of disturbing so it, it, we kind of flipped the model around really nicely that uh, worked out really well last year and we're repeating it this year again and also we are funding a couple of scholars two from cabo verde and two from zanzibar to go to mpg and, and become replicators um, to expand the senior communities um, and Tree Care Foundation does both grant finance, but also we are setting up an impact investing fund. So uh, we are super interested in screening cool social impact ventures that do great things um, so that we can uh, support them both with financial, but also non-financial support. We have a whole lot of resources because of the corporate that sits in the background of that um, foundation. So we have a whole lot of cool mentors, a whole lot of opportunities to generate access to market. And uh, yeah. Uh, that's that's me. The community here is super interesting, super cool. A lot of people from the US, which is interesting. I didn't expect that, but that's super nice surprise. Um, so yeah, uh, looking forward to learning more about uh, this cycle, a uh, circle, and um, very happy to be here. Thanks for the invite. Check out to I don't know who's left. If anybody, Gary, Gary. Mary, Gary. Sorry. Check out. Uh, check in, Gary. Almost got it. Larry, you're muted. Beg your pardon, thank you. Um, I'm, my name's Gary, I'm manager of an entity called the Savile Foundation. Um, I'm from South Africa originally, but now based in Bristol in the UK. Basically, we're a private foundation that works very similarly to many of you in what you've described, but um, we've worked kind of 80% in South Africa for the last 20 years and the rest in various countries around the world, looking at entrepreneurship and education and enablement of people. And what we found is that it's time for Africa to raise its voice and to, so we're consciously getting involved now in seeing how we can galvanize networks of philanthropists to, to think strategically and, and bring more attention to the people in Africa. Um, we've literally found that so much of what Africa knows and has unearthed and has known for a long time is of extreme value and it will become of more value as the systems in the world fall apart as they seem to be doing. Um, so nice to be within this group. Um, I met Etienne a couple of years ago and we haven't engaged at all, but I'm interested to hear what's, what's in the mix here. Wonderful. Thank you so much, everyone, for sharing and introducing. Um, I'm happy also Lucky is again with us. He's in a refugee camp in Uganda, so his internet connection might not be so good, but let's hope it will work out throughout. And yeah, also because everyone has shared, or many have shared already quite some insights into Sina, I feel like I will keep it very, very short because it should really be all about 
our two social entrepreneurs today, but just a few more quick comments on maybe what Sina is or, or how we do what we do. Um, and yeah, all started in 2014 with our first community. That's how it looks like today. There used to be uh, nothing on that hill. And last time Charles also shared when he visited some pictures, it was amazing to see how really it had changed over the years. And that's our base where um, young people have been transforming and unleashing their potentials to become social entrepreneurs. And we do that through kind of a self-organized approach. The young people from difficult backgrounds gain the skills and expertise they need for creating their own social enterprises by actually running the community themselves. And new ideas in that process always emerge and they then become incubated, tested, if they can make it as social enterprises that solve a challenge and can create an impact. And over the years, uh, many enterprises did emerge. And not just that, but also starting from 2016, a group of refugees joined us and said, if the goal is to have a social enterprise, can we not replicate the model of Sina into the refugee camp? And that's how the first replication happened, happened and we supported them doing that. And that set us on a path to explore how we can actually replicate this model in many other communities, not by us going anywhere and saying this is what is needed, but by young people exploring um, the model coming out to Uganda, going through this community that you see. And in the end, um, if they're interested, replicating it, sometimes also with partners like the Tuika Foundation or UNHCR. And yeah, since um, last year, we have been having around 300 scholars and now eight communities five in Uganda, um, two in Congo, and one in Zimbabwe. And um, close to 50 social enterprises have emerged that have created over 348 jobs. And our vision has expanded since that we want to really create like a movement, an African movement, maybe one day a global movement that really allows young people to create a future for themselves, solve their own challenges through a self-organized approach and be able to yeah, create meaningful jobs and social enterprises solving local challenges and through that we have created another entity that allows now kind of the replication to flourish in many different communities currently ongoing are Cape Verde, Zanzibar, Tanzania, Ghana and maybe next year there will be others and um, kind of coordinating between all the different communities we have uh, Sina Global um, and we're also supporting within Sina Global all the different communities as well as some of the enterprises that come out of all the communities to help them accelerate and grow their impact and share and collaborate and collectively stir and evolve the model um, to make it the best possible version it can be. And also we are prototyping an, an investment vehicle that allows us kind of a peer-to-peer -peer investment um, whereby the entrepreneurs that we invest in become the investors themselves once they have repaid. Um, that's kind of another program that is being prototyped and tested. And yeah, we have created this Africa Social Innovation Circle as an idea to help us make our vision come true, to have a systemic change on, on the African continent through the people actually being able to create their own solutions. And it's not always easy um, to fund core or support core elements that are needed such as maybe the, the stuff um, that keeps everything running and that certifies certain skills for new SENA communities that are upcoming, as well as um, generating some kind of hard evidence to be able to have case studies and, and research done that we can really prove our impact. We have a lot of great stories we can share, but we also want to attract bigger funders and donors like UNHCR um, or um, others who can um, adopt with us. We have ongoing talks with, for example, government in, in an African country, but they're always asking for what is the evidence that we can prove, and that's what we're also working on. And the idea is to have a, a purpose-aligned pool of people, and some of you are already part, and others I hope after today will be part, that support us not just um, financially, that is maybe just a side, but really also with being there, making connections, and helping us with a kind of purpose alignment, advice, and everything to be on the right path to have the impact that we wish to see. And I'm really, again, grateful that you're all here. And with this, I don't want to keep, keep you waiting longer. And we'll pass over now to 
yeah, someone that can demonstrate best what Sina is all about, and that's our entrepreneurs. And one of them is uh, Janet. And I invite you to yeah share more who you are, what you do, and what Sina has meant to you. So all the best. Uh, thank you, Etienne, and thank you everyone for being here today. Uh, my name is Aguti Janet. I'm from Uganda. Uh, I joined Sina when literally after university, I didn't know what I wanted to do because I was searching for jobs and couldn't find any. I have a bachelor's degree in social work and social administration, but I searched for jobs for a long time and wasn't finding any, and my parents were getting more and more impatient and frustrated with me sitting at home all the time, according to them. Uh, and so when applications came up for Sina, my brother told me about it and I was just like, let me go and waste time or pass time there instead of being bothered at home. I joined Sina as an introvert, completely not able to share or talk about myself or present in front of people. And I had this knowledge that I had to always be told what to do and follow orders and not be able to think on my own or decide on what I wanted to do. That's hence, that's why I was looking for a job to find a boss to tell me today, go do this, tomorrow, go do that. And then at the end of it all, I write a report according to how they desired. Joining Sina was the first few months were a bit challenging for me. And by the time we joined, it was called a confusion stage, which is indeed, indeed was confusing for a bachelor's degree holder who from day one joining school, you're being told this is right, this is wrong, this is how you're supposed to move, this is the right answer and this is not the right answer. Today, go for lunch, tomorrow, do this and that. And then in Sina, I'm being told you're owning your own life and you're owning your own decision. So if you decide to wake up and do anything, it's up to you. But at the end of it all, what goals have you set and how have you achieved your goals? So basically, I was supported to start aligning myself both personally and pro professionally, uh, articulating myself even more. Because when I did my bachelor's degree, I had to present my research paper in front of a group of students and lecturers, and I completely failed. I froze in front of them and couldn't speak because of my lack of self-confidence and lack of self-esteem. Uh, and joining Sina, I started learning how to articulate myself because we had presentations where you sit in groups of people, present what you wish to do during the week or your goals to try and achieve your goals and to also meet as many mentors as possible to see how best you can run after your goals and achieve them. In about two to three months of being there, life became a little bit easier because then I was able to set my own goals. However, I still had challenges of articulating myself and speaking in front of people. Hence meeting uh, a number of mentors who could help me uh, settle in and try to align. But uh, as we go on, we are being taught through, taken through professional life skills and in which I got to fall in love with one of the skills which was coaching. Having a background of social work and social administration, I knew I wanted to help people, but I didn't know how. So during the coaching sessions, it led me back to realizing the passion that I had connecting with people, hence joining the nonviolent communication activities and being able to meet Susanna by then. And this drove me to realizing that I had a background where I was sexually abused as a child. And this actually was the reason as to why I wasn't able to speak up or have the confidence that everyone thought I should be having. So Sina made me realize how best I could use the challenge I had, the social challenges that I had growing up and embark on them and try to make a better life for myself, but also for the community. So how best do I serve the community with the challenges that I faced? So it helped me realize that what I faced in the past does not define me, but what I decide to do forth is what actually defines me. And hence, uh, a lot of mentoring from different coaches, from different trainers, Etienne and Tony Wamboga were also part of the group that would help me look at the project that I had, develop the project ideas together and try to set goals that would help me. Uh, in 2019, we launched TOTIA platform that supports victims of sexual violence to get psychological, psychosocial support uh, with a background of a lot of poverty happening in Uganda. Many are not able to uh, get psychosocial support easily. So we set up a hotline that people can reach out at any time 
get counseling. It could be anonymous for most of people who don't want their identities known, but um, many end up getting face-to-face -face counseling. Hence the, the love that I had for coaching, which I got from one of the SINA uh, trainings that has helped me to grow and build myself more. From 2019 to date, we've so far helped about uh, 3,080 people online get coaching and counseling. And we've so far supported about 1,000 girls to get medical health care after being abused and many other supports in the end. We are hoping in future to be one of the biggest organizations in Uganda that is not only helping uh, victims of sexual violence to uh, uh, change their mind or to have a free, a life free from sexual violence traumas, but to also be economically independent, hence following forth in the footsteps of SINA, trying to come up with our own center in future that will help these victims also to be able to understand who they are, what they want and who, what their worth is and develop themselves accordingly. I'm always grateful for SINA and the opportunities that I've got. I've also been able to travel to various countries to pitch. Who knew that I would be able to travel one day? But hey, SINA is a dream maker and it has made my dream a reality. I'm so proud to call SINA a home. And every time I'm in Uganda, I always go back to SINA and try to help as many people as I can. So thank you, Etienne, and thank you, Tony Wamboga. Wonderful, thank you so much for sharing. And maybe there's probably some questions or comments, um, but maybe we can collect them and, and have them after Lucky as well and share a little bit more of who you are and what you do and, and what Sina has meant to you. And also you're coming from a different Sina community than the one that you see in my background. So you might also tell us a bit more about that. So uh, Lucky, the floor is yours. You're still muted. Okay, thank you so much, Etienne, for the opportunity. Yeah, first of all, I'm going to start with my background. Yeah, I'm a young performing artist with great enthusiasm in design entrepreneurship. And I lived in a place called Ruchuru in North Congo, Goma, where a thousand people have been killed due to conflict and wars. And one of my related were also killed at the same time. Four young were Unfortunately, lucky we can't hear you. Great Uganda and Congo. Okay, and at that back. particular time. Sorry, like maybe try without the video that the connection is a bit more stable and we can hear you better. And maybe repeat the last few sentences. Yeah, okay, let me let me start. Yeah, so I'm called Lucky Bati Boyenba, I'm 22 years old, young performing artist with great enthusiasm in design, entrepreneurship, and innovation. I lived in a place called Ruchuru, North Kivu Goma, where a thousand people were killed, including my relatives, and four young sisters of mine were raped and killed at the same time in front of my eyes. This situation happened when I was the age of 14 years. And it was during night when we are trying to escape in the bush, running to Bunagana, which is the nearest border that separates Congo and Uganda. Seriously, I've been a refugee since the day I was born and up to now I'm still having the same identity. And I'm always proud to call myself a refugee. Yeah, in 2014, I forced to leave my home country after surviving in a serious attack and ran up to Uganda where I find myself in a refugee settlement called Nachivale that accommodate over 143,000 refugees and the majority of its habitants are young people living in a traumatic situation without doors of opportunities and no access to education. When I reached Nachivale, I was like someone who is living in his own world. I don't know what to do to integrate or to get adapted to the situation. First of all, the language barrier was also a problem. I was hopeless with a lot of depression, living in a traumatic situation where I couldn't know what to do so that I could achieve one day my dreams. And the only situation that I could do to survive was to engage myself in doing micro jobs, like fetching water, carrying five jerrycans on the bike and selling them at only 3,000. 
that could not only sustain yourself, even to sustain your family. And that was the situation that we have been living in Nachivali. But after spending four years within the settlement, I come to realize that young people have a lot of potentials, talents, and they have a lot of creativities, but they all have opportunities and they all, they all have a, a place where they could express and also display their talents and passions. And I was also find myself among them facing the same challenge up to the extent that I was also engaged myself in taking drugs and alcohol so that I can maybe forget the story and even the situation that I'm facing within the settlement. Seriously, it wasn't easy to becoming a refugee. And for real, it's a chaos. And up to now, it is still the same challenge that affecting different people in different refugee communities. In 2018, I got a chance of joining one of the SINA community in Nachivale called Unleash Potentials in Motion, where I discovered myself and get a chance of discovering the potential that I had and the value that I can also contribute to my community and also to support the young people within the settlement. And as far as I was passionate in art, let me say I'm a dancer. Uh, it's when I, together with the team, we came up with Refugee Global Talent, which is a platform that are promoting and nurturing talents of young refugees. Refugee Global Talent, it's a project that's aimed to educate, empower, promote talents, and creating talent opportunities for the young people within the settlement, while supporting them to turn their passion into their profession. When I joined Sina Unle when I joined Unleash Potentials in Motion, I was like, actually, I will, I, I was, I like, I was there without expecting anything that can be positive to my life, even to the life of the young people within the settlement. I was like, let me just going there, losing time instead of remaining at home, taking drugs and alcohol. But after experiencing Unleash for some few months, after passing through the stages, I came to realize that I have a lot to give to the community and not only to support young people, but also to help them grow their economy. Yeah, so Refugee Global Talent is supporting talents of young people through organizing festivals and events where participants gain bigger recognition and acknowledgement in their community. Because we have seen that these young people, they have things that could change and challenge the world, but they all have a door of where they could expose what they are passionate about. And from there, we came to realize that this kind of festivals will be supporting these young people to display their, their, to display their talent and also exhibit what they can do. And this shows that we are not only promoting talents, but we are also using art as a therapy for these people who have experienced trauma, depression, and stress. In 2019, we organized our first edition of the International Refugee Art Festival, where we promoted 56 artists from coming from different three different refugee settlements, and none less than 2,000 people attended to our festival. Like sharing culture together with refugees, regaining smiles on their faces while advocating against xenophobia for refugees with the theme, say no to xenophobia. The festival was very massive and it has supported us and it has given us many ideas on how we could really not only, not only remain on a national level, but to grow and to make it on an international level in order to support other refugees from different countries. So in 2020, we couldn't make it happen due to COVID-19. But in 2021, we also make happen our second edition of the International Refugee Art Festival that took place in Chakatu. And the goal was to sensitize youth about their potentials and to make sure that we show the values that they have in their talents and on how they can turn their passion into their profession in order to become self-sustainable through using their talents. Yeah, we are envisioned at a world where refugees can rebuild their lives through using their talents while contributing to the global economy. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Refugee Global Talent, and we are really looking forward for your feedback and support in order to push us forward and to create a very big impact together with SINA and all SINA communities around Uganda and around the world. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lucky, for, for sharing your personal story and also the great work of uh, RGT. And yeah, now I welcome any kind of questions, comments uh, to Lucky or Janet. Um, 
Let's try and open up the floor. If I may. Um, what I, I'm, thank you so much for your stories, for starters. It's, these are hugely inspiring stories at multiple levels because of where you came from, what you achieved, what you're giving back to your community uh, and what you, how, how you built yourselves up. And this is also one of the first things that uh, Etienne and I discussed and I would like to invite all of you to reflect on that. What, what strikes me, and this is going to be a slightly bold statement, is when I see what's happening here, this would be useful in Europe. This would be, I guess, useful in the USA, Canada. This would be useful way outside Uganda as models of working, as ways of thinking, as ways of practicing. What I find whenever I talk about what James and I work on or, is that I meet with a certain skepsis because it's happening in Uganda or in Africa, and these models are not necessarily seen as being transportable, so to speak, as being adaptable in Europe because it's happening in another continent. And what I'd like to know, because Janet, what you're working on, I, that, that could easily be implemented, I feel, at different spots in Europe. The same for um, what Lucky is working on. So I guess my question is, how do you feel about that? And how do we as a group feel that we can take these models and actually how do, how do we see them working in our own context? Because I'm actually slightly gobsmacked that it that this, this is for the minute fast growing in Africa, but not really adapted anywhere else, whereas it seems so very logic to take that on, or maybe I'm wrong and it's just my my perspective. So I'd like to invite any thoughts on that. Yeah, uh, can I ask something to, to Lucky? Yes. Please. Okay, oh, um, great. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Mm. Cool. Then we come back to Marco's question after, so maybe we collect a few, that makes also sense. Oh, perfect, perfect. Sorry, I didn't mean uh, to jump in there. Just, just yeah, uh, in, in terms of challenges, like, uh, you know, what is, what are you looking for? Uh, what is like one of the biggest challenges you're trying to overcome? Um, and, and how do you think this group could help you? Okay, like, should I respond directly or? Yeah, go ahead to either of the two questions or both. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, on our side, like we are we are addressing like a challenge of lack of opportunities for young talented refugees. Like when I say opportunities, I mean lack of platform where these people could expose and display their talents. And also lack of integration and also, let me say, cultural problems within the settlement. Because here in Achivale, we do have more than 13 cultures, let me say 13 nationalities. And these people, they are all living in the same settlement with different conflict among cultures and also tribes. And for us as refugee global talent, we came to realize that art has the power to unify and also to build a common understanding among different cultures. Because when you, when you are seeing a performing artist who is performing or a musician who is singing, you don't need to care about his gender or the nationality, but you just, you just have to care about the music and the sound that is giving to your soul and your heart. And that's why we are using art as a strategy to unify communities and also promote peaceful coexistence among refugees.
Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, just uh, and and what kind of support are you looking for? You know, what do you need um, and, and to to achieve your goals as an organization as uh, global refugee talents uh, this year and next year? Okay, um, currently as uh, refugee global talent, we are having a serious challenge that we are facing when it comes to to a place. Like we are currently, we are we don't have a specific a working place where we could be gather different young people to come and also to explore more about what they are passionate about and also to develop other skills and creativities that could not only supporting them, but that could also rather contributing to the community. Because I believe the same as Sina does, when young people are together with the same goal and the same purpose, they also have this kind of interaction where they do share different ideas that could not only benefit them as, as refugees, but that could also benefit different people from the community. Yeah, so this is one of the challenge that Refugee Global Talent is facing. Like we're facing a challenge of lack of a working space or a hole that could be enabling us to be running our daily activities and to empower more people in, in, in the community. I have any thoughts to what you need or how the model could be transferred as well to Europe or other places? Sorry? I was inviting Janet and thanks Lucky for your answers. Okay. Yeah, um, initially for how uh, Totia can be or replicated in Europe or any other country is basically uh, this, um, I would say just like how Sina is doing, uh, we would go into the country and identify the people that could replicate the, the solution themselves and they could replicate it to best fit their culture or their community or their country. Because what we've discovered in our work as Totia platform is every, in, in the regions we've worked in, every region has a unique way in which we implement in. Not everyone has the same cultural understanding or tradition. So if, you, if we bring in our own perspective, it might clash and it will not create the impact that it's intended for. So it's best for the communities themselves to realize how best the solution could work for them and we could work in line with that to be able to achieve the same goal. So replicating it in other countries or in other communities would be best by the community members identifying the challenges and we coming in to offer maybe a training and they could take it on and run with it the best way they feel could fit their community at that time. May I ask a question? Maybe to, to both uh, Lucky and Janet, the importance of that hyper-local community and building those relationships in and amongst the community um, that support your organization, your initiatives, what, were there any, as you were, I guess, being introduced to Sina and the practices, et cetera, was there anything in particular from that training or from that value exchange or from the people that you met that really helped build the courage and the confidence to interact or strengthen those community relations to help think about different types of activities or actions that could be taken? I'm just curious from that community lens, what might, what might have been learned versus what did you already have bringing in to the project? And I can answer first. Um, thank you for the question, Laura. Uh, for me, when I came in basically to Sina the very first time, I, like I said, I didn't know what I wanted to achieve at the end of it all. I just came to, to get my parents off my back. So I would say I came in with knowledge from the university of expecting to get information and run with the information. but in Sina, we are instead taught to think for ourselves, set our own goals, and then seek for support 
if there is anyone you you know is able to help you you go straight to that person and articulate yourself so there are different uh programs that we went through and one of them for me what worked best for me in line with what i wanted to achieve was the nonviolent communication understanding the person's need values and everything else and then communicating based on their uh, the, the best way they could receive you. Um, Susan or Etienne, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, if I'm wrong. And this, um, you build a rapport with the person based on their needs and their values. If you consider their values in the end of it all, then you're able to also relate it to what you want to achieve or who you are and your communication is much more clear and understandable with each other. So you have the rapport built and set based on that. And coaching also kind of like helped me to be able to fully not judge the person, but understand their need behind and be able to work with the need that the, the person would present. And I think this is how Sina has also helped generally to for me to be able to articulate or to, to speak up and be as confident as I am today. Um, set goals like how what do you want to achieve tomorrow and work towards that is there anyone who can help you achieve that go to that person express your need if they have the time they'll be able to and if they don't have the time it doesn't mean that they don't care about you but understand the value that they have forth and the priorities they have set and you work according to that it the same goes to the communities that we work in if the community is not yet willing to receive you set back and realize who can support you to get into the community and understand the values of the community, then bring in your opinions or your suggestions, but putting into their consideration their values and their needs at that time, not your own perspective or what you want to achieve. And then be like, this is for me, this is what I want to set. I want to build up a hospital, but they don't need the hospital. They instead need a place to farm. And for you coming in with your hospital, it's not going to help anybody. What I've also seen with the government of Uganda is giving out mosquito nets and taking pictures of people. And you realize that mosquito nets are being used in the garden. So instead of giving them mosquito nets, give them insecticide and give them the seeds and then people are going to be happy. So yeah, that's done. Thank you. Okay, um, let me jump in. Yeah, thank you so much for the question. Yeah. Um, yeah, when it's come to how I get adapted and come up with whatever we are doing currently, when I joined Unleash Potentials in Motion, which is one of the Sina community that's operating in Achivale, seriously, I was traumatized. I went there when I'm already traumatized. I don't know what will come up, what I will come up with. I just went there in terms of spending time. But then, the only strategy that supported me a lot is when it comes to design thinking. After discovering my potentials and all the values that I can contribute to my community, I went directly in the community and practice design thinking, whereby I, I, I organized community survey by empathizing with young people and also define with them up to the up to the level where I came to discover that many young people within the settlement, let me say, especially in Nakivale, they are spending much more their time in music, dance, comedy, poetry, like they're spending much more of their time in art and sport. But due to lack of opportunities and different challenges that have been limiting them to go further with their dreams, it's when they were deciding to start taking drugs and just remaining at home without doing anything. But on our side, we did not we did, we, we did not decide to just come with what we're thinking, with what we have been thinking that could add value to the community. But we rather understand that this idea could be so much potential after understanding how these people are really willing to benefit from it. And it's when we that's how we started and and up to now yeah so we are still working with them and whatever we are doing any kind of update or we need to change something the same young people are the one who are now start bringing this
I think unfortunately we have lost you. Okay. Um, yeah, sorry. Um, maybe we can proceed with another final question, I would say. Um, and hopefully, Lucky, you're able to connect back with the audio. Any final comment or question? I have one for Janet. I think it's not like a, yeah, it's a personal, like, what inspires you each day to, uh, because I find being an entrepreneur or working on my own sometimes it's like, I still have that feeling like, oh, it's hard to make that call or hard to reach out. Like what practices or what connections are you cultivating to uh, just to keep that passion and that spirituality that's inspiring you to move forward and uh, trust me I'm not looking for any right answer it's just to connect with you so I want you to know that uh, well thank you Susanna um, one what is really motivating me on a daily is uh, my two-year-old uh, I make sure that I, I don't want her to to give up so I should be the best example for her. And seeing the way she copies everything that I do or that the father does makes me question what next steps I'm going to do. So if I decide to say, I give up, it's so hard to look for funds. It's so hard to go and work and everything is frustrating. Then she's definitely also going to be like, well, my, my, my mom gave up, so who am I? So. Um, that is the one motivation that I have, but also uh, constantly checking in with the different mentors and coaches that I have. I, I made sure to keep them close and also always getting more mentors, the people I look up to and telling them, okay, now I'm stuck in this position. How can I navigate this? This has always made uh, me get more momentum and new ideas of how best to resolve the issues or the challenges that I may be having. Trust me, there are days that I, I really just sleep because I don't know what, what to do. I'm stuck in this huge circle. I let it be if it, if it is there, it has happened. And then I wake up the next day, I look at my child and I'm like, I gotta get up, I have to move on. This is not going to be one thing that is going to fail and also communicate as much often as I can with the mentors to get a solution. Mm, nice. Thank you. Yeah. I, I bet everybody could go, yes, we have those days where we don't get out of bed and we're stuck on the, the couch or, you yes. know, chair and that you tend to uh, be present to that and allow whatever healing or whatever needs to arise to kind of float through until that new level of inspiration uh, after the integration, maybe the healing that, like you said, the support. Yeah, I find that to be close, close to what my life cycle is. So thank you. And Lucky, I'm more than happy to hear for you, from you as well, if this feels in, uh, interesting to share. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, should I come in for the same question as Janet have already answered? Maybe you see if there's other questions and then you could choose. How about that? You want to, I'm open to that. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to say that seriously, this journey is not really easy. <laughs> and sometimes we used to face difficult situation but what moti but what used to motivating me a lot first of all i do consider self-motivation and also the story and the background of where i came from and where i want to go and where i want to reach and on my side i don't take it I, i'm not taking this for granted because i really need to become a role model that can motivate other young refugees within the settlement 
because there are a lot of people here in the settlement living without knowing for really what they can do. But as far as though we face challenges within this journey, we used to make sure, we have to make sure that we keep moving forward. And we are having mentors around at Sina. We do have acceleration program, programs that wherever we somehow stuck, we go through the acceleration program, they accelerate the mind, they accelerate the motivation, and then we find ourselves on board again, which is one of the Sina program that I do appreciate the most, and it have impacted a lot of Sina social enterprises within Kampala and even in refugee community. Yeah. Well, thank you, Lucky. I think that connects quite well to maybe kind of also my final words, like um, with building a community of communities, you could say like people who share similar values and, and who want to see change um, on the African continent and allow people to, to be in charge of their own lives. And um, yeah, I think um, Lucky and Bennett, you're doing that. And as Sina, we're, we're also doing that. And hopefully one or the other of you wants to also be engaged still with us in the future and maybe join our Africa Social Innovation Circle. And I'll reach out um, individually after and now being mindful of time, it would be nice for the last five minutes, like we checked in, to also check out here. The question is rather maybe, how are you leaving this meeting? And also potentially if there's any commitments you want to pass on, like um, maybe you have an introduction to make to Janet or Lucky or uh, for our next event, someone maybe that you think should be here or you want to join and say, I'm, I'm part of this, uh, keep me um, posted. Um, you're welcome. And um, anything else? How are you leaving this meeting? So again, I can start and I live inspired. Um, also my driving motor to always see the change that is happening within the people, Janet and Lucky and how I met them first and now how they are and the impact they're creating. And that's motivating me as well. And um, I'm grateful for all the supporters that make this happen. And thank you for your time and being here. And um, I look forward to engaging more and check out that pass over to again, Tony. Yeah, I am also grateful to hear uh, the stories of Janet and uh, and Lucky. Um, I'm grateful to be part of, of Sina and, and the work that we're doing. And I hope that the work that Sina does, um, the impact that it is creating gets the support that it needs to reach to the people that need it the most. Um, and I appreciate that all of us are here today to contribute towards that. Um, thank you so much. I will check out to my friend, Chris. Thank you, Tony. Um, I, I just will echo what everybody else has said. Um, Janet and Lucky, your your stories are so so inspiring. It's it's really hard for many of us to really understand what what you both have been through, um, and I know we're only getting a glimpse of it. But to have the the strength and the the vulnerability to to do what both of you are doing is just it's amazing to me. It's inspiring, you know. It's um, way harder than than anything I've ever done. So I just want to, uh, again, commend you and say thank you for sharing your story. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm there with you in spirit and anywhere, any other way I can help. So thank, thank you. And, and thank you, Etienne, for bringing us all together. Uh, great, another great, uh, another great session here. Uh, pass off to Nick. Yeah, uh, just just to, to repeat what uh, Chris has uh, eloquently said there. Uh, thank you, Etienne, uh, Lucky, and Janet. Um, now, I'm not going to repeat everything. Uh, I'm looking forward to finding out more about Sina. Uh, I will be in East Africa in September, Etienne, and I, I look forward to hopefully tying it with you and meeting maybe Janet and, and Lucky and, and the rest of the team, Tony. Um, so yeah, uh, I'll hand over to Charles. Thanks a lot, everybody. Uh, nice to meet you all. Thanks, Nick. And Nick, I can't recommend enough visiting 
Cena in Uganda. I mean, what what the team have created there is nothing short of extraordinary. And each time I see that picture, Etienne, of the current state compared to when Jasmine and I were there, it's just, it warms my heart because you see the, the physical growth uh, in the space, but it doesn't warm my heart nearly as much as, as hearing the eloquence of, of Janet and Lucky um, and, and just hearing your per incredible personal growth and how inspiring you are. It's just, you know, your courage, your competence, it's, it's just totally awesome. Um, so all I can say is keep up the good work. And Etienne, I know I introduced you to Sawa um, and to Daphne Netterhorst. I don't know if she has access to spaces in Kampala that might help Lucky, um, but that's the closest connection I could think of is given his comment about needing a needing needing space or, or place. So, and I'll, I'll be talking to Daphne in the next few weeks. So if that would be helpful, I can certainly bring it up and I'll, uh, Pass it over to uh, Suzanne. And thanks again, everyone. Great meeting you briefly. Yeah, uh, this was a really good use of my time. And I continue to learn from uh, each person's stories and deeply inspired by Lucky and Janet. And uh, I also want to acknowledge the folks on the call, just what each of you are doing and just grateful to be in a space for so many people who care and want to make make a difference so i'm grateful and i will pass over to lauren if you're still with us sure so um i would just like to echo and and thank uh, for the sharing of the stories i'm feeling incredibly energized i like to i like to hear about using design thinking and nonviolent communication in a setting for social change other than just you know improving commercial products and services so it's awesome to see that happening um and i i, I would love to know more um about about cena and and what opportunities there might be so I'll pass it off to Marga. Thanks. Um, just, you know, agree with, with all that's been said before. And uh, in terms of concrete, you know, support, help, uh, I'll very happily continue the road I'm on with James and that we're on. Um, and I'm very grateful to know a bit more about the bigger picture now, because we sort of just dived in and started doing stuff and then well, we, I'm, I'm getting to know Sina now as we go. The other thing in terms of, of concrete help and also help for space, something that James and I have been talking about a lot and I'm working on is establishing a stronger connection with the public library system in Uganda, because as I understand, there's a need for more reading, there's a need for spaces, and there's a need for sustained knowledge development. And actually, Uganda has quite a strong public library network with quite outreach focus public librarians so um, committing to doing what I can there and working together with Emanuela on a fledgling project to connect entrepreneurs deeper and further and entrepreneurial skills with the public library knowledge system and the research library knowledge system so that's uh, we should be coming your way shortly with a proposal the gods of time willing <laughs> And I'll be passing on to Janet, one of the heroes of today. Um, thank you very much, uh, Margo. And thank you everyone for really the messages that you've been sending in that chat. It's motivational enough and makes me want to work even right now in the wee hours of the day. But uh, I appreciate all of you in your different capacities and for also taking time to listen to our stories, which is really inspiring also to us and encouraging even more. Um, so thank you, Tien and Tony for organizing this event and for meeting Susan once again and all the new people. I appreciate meeting you all and hope to keep in touch. Um, I pass it on to Joyce. Um, thank you. Um, I must say that this has been very inspiring. Um, the, the, just the, just the, the work that has been done. I have admired your work for years. 
And just hearing from both of you today, you reminded me of what is possible. Um, I, have, um, I have been to the refugee camps and I, I think uh, you would know about in Changwali and a few other things because we, we work on education. So we are working with some of the refugee communities and the, the, the issue facing young people and girls in particular in that place are uh, really something. And uh, to just see how you have turned that to, 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 to a different, to, to being of service and transforming, helping with the transformation of girls' lives. I think to me, it is very, very inspiring. And also the self-discovery journeys. You are both journeys really just speaks volumes to what can be and isn't because uh, people don't get a chance to, to, to get to, to, to link up with themselves and get the help that they can. So I found this very, very inspiring as somebody who knows the space and knows how, how tough things are. And I, I was just thinking what keeps you know, people going is that they, they can't stop. You know, the, the alternative isn't, isn't I'm feeling bad. The alternative I felt like it is I, I'm feeling bad and, 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 and I can't feel worse and I must, I must get myself out and get somebody else out. So I applaud your work and your courage uh, to actually learn and, and apply and your opportunity and courage to dream. Thank you for sharing. Just really very moving, um, uh, moving um, lives and transformation is possible and you are living, living um, testimony of that. Thank you for being vulnerable and for helping us understand the hope that in Africa's youth, what keeps me going every day. Thank you. I, I, I didn't say I'm Joyce Malonde, I'm from Washington, DC, but I'm a Kenyan. So I, I do understand the space quite a bit. And our programs are in Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania. Thank you, maybe Scott next. Oh, okay, thanks so much. Yeah, thanks, Atina, um, for the invite. Thanks, uh, Lucky and Jennifer, for sharing your stories. It's yeah, it takes a lot of courage to to do so, and but you can never be sure. I mean, you you're. I think personally, the more you share, everyone shares their personal stories. Um, you know, the world would be a better place, right? Um, and uh, yeah, this is this is really important, um, and yeah, what I can do is share share this with our team and, and look at projects that we're doing, um, and and, uh, and and see how we may be able to support you folks um, and Cena. So, and I can also share this um, with with colleagues that, of course, that I've worked with through the years and. And um, yeah, I think from our perspective, we're trying to bring awareness to what's happening really across the globe, and um, and uh, and and then also try to bring resources behind that. So I, um, yeah, so uh, that's I mean that you know we'll we're um, you know we'll provide feedback next week, uh, and then um, and then uh, you know sort of go from there. But yeah, I'm really impressed with. Uh, you know the program and and uh yeah just want to learn more but yeah i think uh I, this is great work and and just you know applaud you all for um you know engaging and 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 doing this work it's really important thanks thanks so much uh just uh yeah thank you so much um lucky jenna it was amazing really touching thank you so much for sharing all of that Test, test one, two. Uh, that was really awesome. So thank you so much. Um, it's it's amazing. And it's just um, really uh, underlining and reconfirming for me uh, that there are so many incredible ideas and talents in the Tina community. And I'm kind of uh, echoing a little bit what what Scott said. Like, you know, I, I, I get anxious about taking action to support. So um, I'm wondering a little bit, and maybe that's just an open question, comment. Like how can this community here take action and how can all that privilege be leveraged that is in this community here and the audience specifically because i understand that there's quite some 
you know, good-hearted impact seeking people who also have a lot of resources. So uh, I'm wondering how this, this uh, social innovation circle is going forward. I'm super interested in that and, and, and how it's kind of designed and what its goals are. Um, and uh, thanks again for inviting me and, and Lucky and Janet, uh, you are amazing. Keep on doing that fantastic work and I hope to meet you one day. Uh, uh, check okay. out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, actually, I'm very glad for this Africa Social Innovation Circle event. And I'm really glad to meet again with Nick and Etienne and Janet and Tony. Yeah, seriously, this was an amazing moment whereby I feel happy in sharing my story and also to hear Janet's story and all the messages on chat. Seriously, this is one of the potential. If you are all happy about what you are doing, we also feel like we have to keep moving forward. And thank you so much. And I'm really looking forward to see how the next social, like Africa Social Innovation Circle event will take place. All right. Thank you. Well, thank you, everyone, for being here. And if anyone wants to stay back and continue the conversation, feel free. Otherwise, have a great morning, evening, middle of the day, wherever you are and hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.